support of the friends of That's What She Said. Support BCTV by visiting bctv.org slash support. It used to be great, now it's not so great, but it's still pretty great. Reading. Eat pretzels non-stop and pot pie no top. No dessert till we drop. Perks. Did they really say that? They did not say that. Yeah, they did say that. That's what she said. Hello and welcome to another wonderful That's What She Said. I'm Jane Street and, you know, this is the last That's What She Said that I'll be on for some time. I'm taking a little trip. Oh, oh well, okay. it'll be fine. Again? Uh, again. <sighs> I, I, we have <sighs> Martha here and we have Nicole and, uh, well, we're missing Sheila. Sheila got lost. <laughs> what is she doing? Is she getting a new do? Yeah, she's at a hair oh. competition or something oh. like that. And oh. I don't know. Well, she better be spectacular when oh she arrives. She better shake yeah. a tail feather and get here. Ooh. She has a great hair. They she does. Love I with know. It. Oh, well, anyway. So, yes, I, uh, my friend Kirk is going out on the national tour of uh, that, uh, uh, The Wizard of Oz. Oh. Oh, and wonderful. he said, you know, it would be really helpful if you came along and were my personal assistant. And I oh, thought, Jane, how well, there's fantastic. so much that I don't know about the United States, and it's going really? all over the place. So I really? thought, I will go along, I will come along and, and, and pop in via the little iPad. Oh, good. I will Yay. be a floating well, head if you. I can. Good. And uh, I, well, I miss you, too. It's it's been nice being back for two shows. <laughs> uh, you're live in the studio. But uh, yes. Um, Kirk owes us for stealing you away. Well, yes. he does, but uh, it's all for a good cause. <laughs> uh, hmm. Oh, excuse me. Truly, truly. Well, here we are. We have the, uh, the phone number. You can call us at 610 378 0426. Oh, I did it without looking. That's wonderful. That's Yay. very good. I'm not going to be on. She's learning. I finally got it memorized. Five years oh. and I finally got the number. <laughs> Isn't life wonderful? Um, and also, uh, you can tweet us. I have the Twitterer here at, uh, at sign. She tweets to me. Uh, so, um, well, here we are. Did, did we get are. any sort of in, information on when she was coming? She was just, like, coming. Well, she said she was minutes away, but that was... Minutes a lot ago? of minutes ago, so <laughs> I don't know. All I right. can text her real quick and yell at her. Oh, well, it's fine. She'll, she'll get here when she gets here. We haven't locked the door, have we? Have we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my goodness, um, it's been uh, quite, quite a little bit of stuff since we last were together. Um, I, 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 we have had hurricane after hurricane, and uh, my and, goodness, and and fire and, and earthquake fire and hurricane. And it's just uh, what other signs of apocalypse <laughs> have been happening? <laughs> well, um, so, so has anybody? Have either of you ever been in a hurricane? Here, the tail end twice. <laughs> Uh, what was it? It's 1972, it was like I 72. think. 1972. Yes. I was, it was home for the summer from Italy. And, um, Welcome home. <laughs> <laughs> my father had just come home from having a very severe heart attack Ooh. when it started to rain. And um, my parents' basement flooded, but my mother didn't want him to know because he was <laughs> sitting there in the living room while it was pouring rain and, oh and we could hear things floating in the and and so my mother would look down the steps and say she'd come in and go she, oh, that's the second step but don't tell daddy and, <laughs> and, and like, you know because he's going to die right here if we tell him and finally it was up to the third and the fourth and everything oh. in the cellar was ruined it was up to about the tenth step i mean they had a lot of and finally my father kept saying we have to move things in the basement. And my mother goes, no, no, it's fine. don't worry about it. <laughs> Finally, she was so upset, and I have no idea what time it was during the day, that she was so uh, tired of this man who thought he was going to die right there, um, that she, he finally said, but isn't there, so how much she said, and because she'd say there's a little bit of water, in the how much water, and finally she said, pardon me, darn it, but not darn it. <laughs> Everything's floating. It's up to the tenth step. And then she watched him to see if <laughs> And he didn't. <laughs> and that's how I killed my father. <laughs> and he lived for about ten years 
years after. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's, uh, have you had any exp hurricane experience? I was, I was told that I did, but I was six, so I believed anything oh, at the time. Yeah. But, I mean, I, it was when I was in Pittsburgh, so I don't think hurricanes can get that far inland, but I remember we were leaving my grandparents' house, and my grandparents were like, do not leave, do not take her. This was my biological father. And they're like, do not take her. Do not go out there. It's too dangerous. And he was like, we'll be fine, because he's a moron. <laughs> well, I don't talk to him anymore. Um, <laughs> one of the many reasons. But I remember we got about a thousand feet down the road and he couldn't go anymore because Oof. the road was wow. flooded and he was hitting the gas and the car wasn't going. Ooh. And six year old me is like crying and scared. Wow. And I'm like, please go back, please go back. So we turned around, Oof. went back, and we're running inside and he's holding on to me and the wind is blowing. And I see all this debris in the yard, and I'm like, what's happening? So I get inside and was like, just totally shaken. Luckily, my granny was the greatest person on earth and like, <laughs> calmed me down. I later find out that her, their porch had been blown completely off their house, wow. and that was all the debris in the oh. yard. So I don't know if that was a hurricane, but those winds were Really Those bad. ones were yeah. serious. Yeah, that was no joke. Was that the year that so. they had all the tornadoes out in that part of the state? Remember that they were just, oh, I mean, I really horrendous. It would have been like 87, 88, yeah. I think, is one yeah. of yeah. them. Well, yeah, um, I but yeah, I had friends in Fort Myers, or Cape Coral, which yeah. is outside Fort Myers, and their homes were were severely damaged. Yeah. It's, it's awful down there. And then there's Puerto Rico, which, and all the, all the islands, which are yeah, devastated. So I, I, yeah. I would say if... If you have a little, little spare change or something, uh, there, there are plenty of resources uh, for, to find out numbers of ways to help, uh, yeah, I'd say. Puerto Rico is really, yes. really in desperate need of they help. They were 100% powered down. That's scary. I think yeah. I just read that the National Guard has been deployed to Puerto Rico now, so, but or is being they said deployed. People, are, people have just decided they're going to leave because everything has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they, they, they don't think they'll get electricity back for months. Well, and months. then there's Barbuda, and who knew there was a Barbuda? Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I'm sorry about, to the, all the Barbudians, but that was destroyed. this is, it was completely yes. destroyed. There are no, this is the first time since Barbuda became inhabited that right. there are no human inhabitants right. there. Didn't they, is, they evacuated them to a, a sister island, mm -hmm. a yes. nearby island yeah. that just yes. took them all in completely? Yes. Yeah. It's just horrible. And then yes. there, there is the, uh, the earthquake in Mexico, or quakes uh, yeah. in Mexico. There have been which a couple just, in Mexico City that have been really... That um, broke my heart when awful. the school, there was a school yes. that was demolished yeah. and they were going through, I, I can't even talk about it, like I, it, yeah. I was crying reading that article. It just, it's, I have these irrational fears of things happening that I can't control. And I don't I know how irrational they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, now, you know, it's... I think we all have that right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it seems like Mother, Mother Nature is getting a little upset with us. Yeah, we're, um, we're getting a spanking pretty we, resolutely. We, indeed, and, and the thing that a lot of people would, will, will say is the Earth, well, we're go the Earth's going to come to an end. That's absolutely untrue. The Earth is going to be fine eventually. We're, We're going, going to disappear, to an end. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, we we should aspire to be a little bit better with what we do with our home. Shouldn't we though? I mean, oh, where was it? There was somewhere recently speaking of this. Uh, well, there's Oklahoma, but there was somewhere else that's having a lot of earthquakes uh, because of the fracking, and of course the frackers are saying it's not happening. But oh yeah, when you fracture the the structure of the earth and pump water down there and other chemicals, you're going to... You create instability. Yeah, you, you know, you, it's, you it's basic I mean, laws of you, you can't, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So that's just, that's just how it's going to Yeah. Indeed. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think you have to, I mean, you can do that anytime. Take a bowl of ice. Mm -hmm and pour water into it and watch what happens to the displacement. I mean, it's a pretty easy concept to understand that you can only put so much in one place before something's going to happen to explode it, right? Indeed. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you, 
You don't need a physics class to figure and, that and out. And then there's the ice sheet Never in Greenland, oh. which, which is getting more and more water running right. under it because the, of the melts, and that's all going to re the same thing with the ice. It's going to just release from the earth yeah. and slide into the ocean, and we're all going right. to die. <laughs> Welcome to That's What She Said. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a fun show. Fire and brimstone we're certainly <laughs> And speaking, from, speaking of plagues, <laughs> so, let's talk about that spotted lantern fly, shall okay. we? Okay, can I get oh. on my can I get on my soapbox for yes, this? Yes, we have no. Jamie to thank for the top loaded tragedy of the show. Yeah, I know. It's really, I feel like we're doing some Shakespearean tragedy here right now. Indeed. Um, speaking of plagues, is this the? But what can we do about it? Okay, okay they're here. So, so first of all, you guys need to know that spotted spotted lantern thing is a thing. But our lantern fly, fly is a thing, and you need to be concerned about it because it is it has the potential to destroy our agricultural economy in Berks County. Uh, what because, does it eat? Okay, so it loves Alanthus, which is what we call Tree of Heaven. Hmm. So if you look that up online, Tree of Heaven, figure out what it looks like. It mostly grows on like forest edge. Hmm. Um, very popular, it turns a bright crimson in the fall, mm. like a real bright red. So it's lovely, but it's also a crap tree because it has no economic value, really. Mm. And it's a, and it's it, not indigenous. No, no, <laughs> neither is lanternfly. Well, um, I mean, but it's so, like, right. Well, couldn't they just battle each other to the death and well, go away? Well, lanternfly loves to feed on it, yeah. so it's a home base for them. But, and that'd be fine if they stuck to that, but they love stone fruit trees, Ah. They go after timber. They've been found on apple trees. And what I think is probably the dan most dangerous is uh, grapes. Oh. They're loving grapes. And we oh, have boy. a very mm. healthy uh, vineyard system here in Berks County. Yes, and we do. And we've got tons of orchards and vineyards under quarantine. I won't name them because I don't want to out them like that. But it's, it's becoming a real issue. So what you can do, this is what you need to do. If you find an adult lanternfly, go online. Look at Penn State Extension. Look for adult spotted lanternfly. Figure out what it looks like. They're easy to spot. They're we really had them in bright. our yard. Kill them. Kill them immediately. Kill the adults. Figure out what the eggs look like. They lay them in masses in like lines on trees. Hmm. Go and scrape those off the tree. Put them in double baggies or put them in a killing liquid. Kill them. You have to kill this insect at all stages. Um, they also want you to contact Penn State Extension if you find them in a non-quarantine area. So if you go online, they'll show you where they have it uh, like identified and regulated. If you're not in that area, call them immediately. What? Save your specimens because they'll want you to send them in. I mean, mm. it's, it's that serious. We need oh, to learn indeed. their biology. We need to, this has to be something we take care of. It's not a joke. Mm. Like, don't joke about it. It's, it's bad, it's serious. I've talked to orchard growers and they're scared. They're mm. scared. So mm. anyway, that's my that's my soapbox. Start killing those things like with abandon. If it, you <laughs> see them, just destroy them. All all take all your rage out on them. All of your rage. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Good I, luck, Leonard. I <laughs> saw something in my backyard today, and I don't think it was a spotted lanternfly, because it didn't have spots. But it was sort of it was bra it was about yay big. Okay. And but it was tallish too. Did it's it open up its wings and no. there was crimson? No, no. I didn't. It, there were no. There was no wing opening. It was climbing along the uh, a wire, just sort of lollygagging across the backyard. Did they lollygag? They do. And I, I read someone said <laughs> they saw them. Like they seriously. jumped, but I don't think they <laughs> jump. But someone said they saw them jumping. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about them. I found one in my greenhouse last week. Ooh. Uh, it was dead, but that was a that was a scary moment for me because. If they come into my greenhouse for the winter, then LA, I I've got it. Yeah, and I don't think I'm growing anything they'll eat, but I, who knows? Yeah, they might. Yeah. I mean, if they so, if they can't find something to eat, I'm sure they'll adjust their diet. They'll adjust, and, and it's just like stink bug years ago, where there was nothing here that would eat them. Nothing wants them. Now, eventually, some some things have found a taste for stink bug. They're finding them in the gut of of animals and other insects and stuff, but we're we're nowhere near that with lanternfly. Hmm. Nothing lo likes this. Hmm. Would building so. the wall keep them out? Do you think? <laughs> no, these are from Asia, so oh, okay. well, they hitched well. a ride on a ship. They have so. a wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't work. Didn't work. It for didn't them work for either. them either. Yeah, they're no. they're from they're from Asia, and then moved in in through like they were in China. They moved in through Korea, Japan, I mean, and so it's it's virtually impossible. <laughs> no, because these are serious. I know, but 
<laughs> but it's virtually impossible in this day and age to, to defend ourselves against these insects and right. fungi because there's so much inter, international trade. Yeah. yeah. Right. We just, it's just going to happen. Right. We, oh, yeah. I mean, there's the story of the spotted lanternfly. I could bring up zebra mussels. I could bring up, you know, carp. Right. I can bring up a hundred different invasive species. Right. Good zoo that, you know, cause problems in this, in this country and, uh, you know, other places. So people just need to be aware of it. Well, <laughs> we have we our now. first tweet. Uh, off, <laughs> it's from a lantern off, well, It's yeah, from a lantern came over yeah. the wall. Come well, find me, suckers. Our, our, friend, our friend Rocky says it's the fourth, fourth Monday at nine and welcome to the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> that's Woo, that's this, this what she said. We and, might be back next month. Who knows? Is it uh, not amazing that once we were criticized for not discussing serious topics on this show? Eat your, yes. eat your heart you out. You want frivolity back now, don't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> But we discuss serious topics with a lighter edge. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Spe speaking of that and walls, yeah. and it was and just uh, it was just on before us the uh, DACA and the Dreamers, right. and uh, it's just this is it's it's just frightening. Uh, somebody take this because well, they get no federal aid. You know, I think people that you know the thing is they take our jobs. That's been proven not true. Uh, they, they, they are on welfare. They can get no federal aid. They get no federal aid for college. They can't take out federal loans. They don't get Medicaid. And yet they go to college. Because they, they work, work their butts for it. off. Now, they can take out private loans. Okay, they, mm -hmm. can, you could, they can take out a bank loan, mm. if should they be able to do that. They get no Medicaid. They do pay taxes. They do have to register for the draft. But just going into the military and serving several tours in Afghanistan is not a road to their easy citizenship. Um, they do nothing negative for our country. Yeah. We will take your blood. I will and argue then with thank you, you if you're going to. Do no, you think I, know, I would no, argue no, with no. you on that? Are you kidding? Or me? anything else? No. <laughs> She's just salty that I yelled at her about lanternfly. I'm, I, I'm sorry, actually. Could you could you give Sheila like a little text? Because now I'm starting to get worried yeah, because she did say she was going to be here. She said she was minutes and away. In, in, yes, in minutes away. And has she decided just not to come in? If so, we'll we'll Sheila? coalesce and c clump. Okay. Um, Do you want me to call her on air? Oh, <laughs> certainly. What the heck? At any rate, that's um, you but, know my feeling about DACA. That you know, all the that there were five myths that the New York Times and and the. Washington Post and a number of papers absolutely dismiss the, the common beliefs. They take jobs from good, of, mm -hmm. you know, good solid Americans. Um, they get lots of welfare. Not true. Um, they have an easier way to citizenship. That's not true. Um, you know, it's 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 more of the same fear mongering and vilification of the other right. that that is thriving in right. this current it, it's it's that fear i need to have a fear of something so let me find a fear and that drives me and i, I don't i just don't understand i don't think but I'll can you imagine it. how these people feel i mean where they're not all children but can you imagine suppose you've been in this country for 20 years you came when you were two <laughs> okay from argentina you came when you were two and you have never been out of this country you speak English and whatever Spanish you've learned at home, but you speak English. You've gone through our school system, and now there is a possibility that you may be sent back to Argentina. Where you know nothing. Where you know nothing. It's a culture you know nothing about. Can you imagine how you would feel? It would, I mean, it would be like going to the moon. And I, I urge you if, you, if you weren't tuned in for the program before us, uh, what is Inter Burke's Intercultural Alliance. Burke's Intercultural Alliance. Thank you over there. <laughs> um, it was a program all about DACA. It, there was, uh, there was, uh, they, they had some interviews with the Dreamers, um, and it was, it was quite moving. And uh, you should, you should check it on in the archives. Uh, it'll be there probably by tomorrow. Uh, but uh, Burke's Inter Intercultural Alliance. Um, and uh, check out that program. The I, audio, I the, the interviews were done by audio, 
because the people they interviewed were afraid to come on camera. So Understandable. I, <laughs> I would be too. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Okay, so, yes. Sheila update. I'm sorry, Sheila update. She says she is on her way. <laughs> She'll be here in just a few minutes. She says, I'm coming, be there very soon. I don't know if she remembered what time the show started. <laughs> <laughs> We've only been doing it for five years. <laughs> Maybe she thought that the like the fallback thing started oh, already. Oh, I'm not sure. There you go. So she's on her way. She's on her All way. All right. <laughs> now, now, who doesn't who who doesn't know how to survive at a fall festival? We had we had a topic about fall festival <laughs> survival, know. Fall festival and I was confused is. by it. I put that on there because like. It seems like the fall is the season of, you know, street festivals and, and you know, park festivals and all of that and hundreds of vendors. And it is. How do you choose? Like Could you... Yeah. How do you choose which ones to go to? How do you Absolutely. prepare to spend the day? How do you make sure that your child doesn't have a massive meltdown while you're there? How do you, you know? well, how do you do that? Well, you isn't there enough, but isn't there enough that's a enter, but isn't there enough that's entertaining? For, to keep a child interested. Well, I think in it can get things. overwhelming. Oh, I think well, it can get overwhelming. That. So my husband and I had a rare date night. Thank you. Or date afternoon, as it turned out, and we went to the the uh, Fall Fest in West Reading, mm. and we were walking around and we were kind of looking at people, going, "What? What are you doing today?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah. uh, you know, like one thing was there were several men walking around without a shirt, and I was like, I didn't know that that was standard practice. Like, I'm at a festival. No rules. Shirts off. Perhaps like, the shirt fell. <laughs> perhaps he got it ripped off by anxious mobs of fans. <laughs> but well, it's happened. No. I don't know. <laughs> Never happened to me. Oh my gracious. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> but but it is it is the season of fall festivals. Um, they're all around. Check your, check online. Check the newspapers. Um, but uh, they're, they're a lot of fun, and there's many things to do. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and go to, I'm sure, Freakin' Farms are <laughs> our favorite, favorite freaking 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 farm. orchards. Freakin' Orchards is freaking beautiful right now. <laughs> if you go down, they've got all their pumpkins out. They have, they have the most wonderful apples. It's, it's just the greatest place. So if you, you know, And if you orchards. want it to stay freaking gorgeous, you've got to kill the lantern fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. My goodness. That's true. That's so, true. Yeah, freaking or Speaking of small, small venues, well, then I guess they're not terribly small, but even we live in this bespoke time where craft beers and, and mm. craft chocolates and I, we, we several years ago did a, a, a piece about uh, Bell Alley pretzels and, yes. and Shelly, who oh, works yeah. there. Yes. And I just <clears throat> have to urge you, in this day and age of, of handmade things and the value on that, I know it's in Reading and it's, it, yeah, you have to come well, into the city and I know that's scary, but it's like barely it shouldn't Reading, be. Um, but she's, she's a hard working lady who makes darn good pretzels. And uh, she's been doing it. Uh, she well, she took over for the person who ran it before her. She was an intern, I guess. And then when he passed, she took it over. And she's there every morning, except I think Sunday, um, churning out these delicious soft pretzels. Oh, and uh, she's she just lovely. Mm -hmm. She started at eleven. I remember that story yeah. because she wanted to make yes. money to buy her own school yeah. clothes. Ah, so yes. So she started 11. So it's then. on Bell Alley, which is on what street? Bell um, Alley um, off, Laurel. Of, on, off of Laurel Street. Off of, off Laurel. of Laurel between 6th and between 5th and 6th? Yeah, you'd seven, think I'd have that information right yeah. at my fingertips. There's a, there's a sign out. Yes, there is yes. a sign yes. out. Yeah. And, you, and yeah. the street is named Bell Alley. Right. Yeah. right. I've sent a couple people her way so, recently. So, it's yeah, wonderful. GPS Bell Alley and... Uh, yeah. But uh, she really deserves your support. Um, if there are any businesses out there, a brew pub, certainly I'm sure she would be happy to supply you with, yes. with stuff. Yes. And they're but some of the best soft pretzels I've ever eaten. They are, they are I mean, absolutely. They're so good. And they and freeze. And they, and they freeze, freeze well. Yes. And they're not expensive. No. Oh my, no. my gosh. No. She has kept her prices down. Oh, it's, it was four, it's like four fifty for a dozen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, she, and honestly, it's not something she's packaging in and mm. then proofing and baking. They're all handmade. She's making them from the flour and the water and the yeast and the malt uh, from start to finish mm -hmm. in these wonderful coal ovens. Right. She's just 
an amazing woman. And uh, and she's uh, cool, man. Like, you just got to meet her and talk to her. She's, she is. She is cool people. Yeah. So, I like her. so we please. We just need to have more soft press. Uh, actually, if you go to our website, uh, yeah. that's what she said, online.com or TWSS.tv, and look at our, I forget what it's called now, but it's our guest list. You can, we have a, a link to uh, her information. So, anyway. Um, but I think there's something to be said about those you know, mom and pop stores or those, you know, single owner mm -hmm. businesses. I, I think that, you know, something that I really love about Reading and the surrounding area is that I, I feel like we have a commitment yeah. to supporting non-chains. Like, you know, for example, we love to go to Queen City Diner on mm -hmm. the weekend. And when we go in, they know us. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we went in a couple weeks ago and they were like, oh, no kid with you today. And we're like, no, he's with... Oma and Opa, and, and you know, just feeling like you're welcomed and comfortable, and, and yeah. you know, we'd never go anywhere else. Yeah. Right. I love that it's, place. Ah, uh, well. So, something, well, we're, we're taking that loop back into the disturbing. <laughs> oh, come on, we were having fun in the Well, we were. We'll have fun, we'll have fun again someday, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> skip the disturbing. <laughs> skip the disturbing? Okay. Well, fine. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I, 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 no, I have to speak to this because it just offends me so. Uh, apparently uh, in Brazil there was a decision by the psychologists, the, the psychi <laughs> psychiatric community, uh, that uh, gay conversion theory therapy was uh, a stupid, ineffectual idea. Um, uh, but a judge recently has overturned that decision that was made in 1999. <laughs> um, <laughs> and now says gay conversion theory therapy is indeed a viable option. This case was brought by a, a Christian woman who is a psychotherapist whose license was revoked because she practiced because gay conversion. Because she cray. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to say this any more plainly than you were born what you are. Um, you, were, you were born with the feelings you have, you were born with the emotions you have. It, it, it just... I can't believe and, that we really even have to talk about this. This is idiotic. Of this course is it is. This is just stupid. It, in this day of enlightenment, when we know so much, okay, so she had a vision or whatever. She's wrong. She's just wrong, and, and we shouldn't even be wasting our time on saying she's just an idiot. We shouldn't, but... Uh, she's an idiot. She's, she's an idiot. <laughs> she is an idiot. Um, but Sorry. I, I, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's, if, if you subscribe to the idea of a god, which on some level I do, I believe that God creates us each in the form in which he would like us. Isn't he, that what the Bible did. says that we were created in God's image? And whether so, he doesn't make imperfections. We, we molt, we we change, we mutate, we, but we are all imbued with that divine stardust. Absolutely. And oh. I, and speaking of stardust, oh. the, the, there she goes. Divine stardust. Has, oh, oh, look at that hair. Look at that hair. Oh. Oh, oh my God. God! Can I have a ton of makeup it's, on? You oh got your hair God. in? <laughs> look at you! You are so glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> look at those, <laughs> those, those. Yeah, You're so glamorous as she pulls a microphone out of her. Always you the lady. Like, you know what? <laughs> That's a good one. You don't need class, any of girl. that to be beautiful, though. Oh my gosh! Though. I have like layers upon my you face. You do. Where did you have this done? At um, Empire Beauty School. My friend oh, James right. is a student there, and he had a competition today, so oh, he needed neat. a long hair model. So, well, you, oh, here I am. Have a better one. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it weighs a lot. It's like forever. <laughs> <laughs> Everything weighs on well, me right some now. Wine oh my hey, I will. This is your favorite well, cheese. I'm so glad to be here. Well. Well, while you, while you, you take a moment and calm down. All right, and do I we'll do? go to the surprise topic. <laughs> oh, and, uh, good. Uh, so we're all that surprise topic. <laughs> surprise. So honestly, oh, it's not chip. really a surprise topic. It's more of a moment of Jane topic. Um, so, 
bear with me as okay. I, I go through this, but it's something I had to get off my chest. Unfortunately, we don't have, see, like, like those, big, those big shows like Colbert or, 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 or John Stewart, or any, any, any of those, they have teleprompters. So they can, they can put extended thought into a little thing in front of them and read it off that. We have no teleprompters, so I have to have it on paper. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a fallible human being. <laughs> and speaking of sorry, lately, recently, I'm sorry if you think the NFL or other sports players are disrespecting the flag. There are certain people who do. Disrespecting the flag or the country or the people of the armed forces. I fear that they've forgotten the greatest tenet of this country of ours, indeed the one thing we should be proudest of and protect the most because it is our very essence of freedom, is the right to express ourselves. It's our free speech. Of course, free speech is a double-edged sword. It does have its consequences. If I say, for example, living in her sometimes acknowledged former home of Berks County, that I cannot tolerate the soulless, ferret-faced force of self-promotion and need that is Taylor Swift. <laughs> I fully expect oh, that Taylor. umbrage will be taken, and I should expect blowback. My free speech does not supersede yours. However, your umbrage should not supersede my feelings. Fire away. And you could say that's apples and oranges, but it's really not. But back to kneeling. This country was founded on, in, via, protest. Yes? It has been an able tool of social change since our founding days. Workers' rights, women's rights, civil rights. I'm sorry that people feel this protest is disparaging our country, our flag, your service. It's really not. And if you can't see the tree for the forest, I'm sorry. If you feel that this is an attack on you, our country, what have you, I suspect that those people who feel that way live in a bubble, a bubble of straight white privilege, a bubble into which many of this great country can only glimpse from the outside. And I fear that the view from the inside of that glistening orb is quite distorted. You see, no one is saying, all police are bad. But if you deny that African Americans have more fear at the hands of police than whites, you live in that bubble. No one is saying, all Christians are bad. But if you deny that much evil is being done in this country in the name of Christianity, then you live in that bubble. Example, I lived through the 80s. I saw many of my friends, people I didn't know, friends of friends, millions, die from a disease that this government refused to acknowledge. Protest made sure that those many voices did not go unanswered and unheard. Our servicemen and women did not give us their blood, their health, their lives, so that this country could do evil to its citizens. They fought and bled and died so that we could be a free people, that we could expect our country to be equally benevolent to all its citizens. And importantly, that we could have the freedom to peacefully call out injustice when we see it. Those who do not auto-salute the flag or rise for the national anthem are not rebuking those who fought for this country. They are not disrespecting the country. They are shining the searing light of freedom on the injustice of a country, a great country indeed, but a country that has sometimes failed to watch out for all of its citizens. These wealthy elite folks, these ball players, these entertainment folk who you would have sit down and behave, just shut up, are giving a voice to the voiceless. Their, celeb their celebrity gives them a platform for those who have no voice. And I say bravo to them. It is their right, it is their duty, and their freedom to do so is what makes America great. 
But let's be honest here. It's not really about the kneeling or North Korea. It's neither about fake news nor Obama's non-existent wiretaps, no. Those and the many other examples are just the shiny objects that a corrupt leader and his collisionous administration toss out to distract us, to divide us. The real danger to this country and all that makes it great sits in our house under our beloved flag. It is not peaceful protest against injustice that works to harm our country or diminish the sacrifices of those fine men and women who protect it. No. It is he who sits in our highest chair. He who divides, denigrates, and devalues those whose care is placed in his incapable hands. He hurts this country more than any bended knee ever could. Don't let us become a nation of grackles, chasing after any, every shiny, inconsequential trinket thrown our way. Let us become instead a nation which revels in our differences, that lives and lets live, that cares for us all. We do so much better together than alone. And now before I shut the heck up, I'll repeat the words of my dear friend Penny Arcade, a woman far wiser than I. Words so t compelling and true that I felt the need to permanently <laughs> etch them onto my skin. Love someone and let them love you back. It's the most political act you can make. It's the only one that really changes the world. And that's our moment of Jane secret topic. Roll that outro. Yesterday, I saw. I found this interesting. It said they posed the question: How many people stand at home when they're watching a football game at home for the national anthem? Mm -hmm. right. Nobody stands. No. So it's, it's, I mean... No, there's so much hypocrisy tied up in this whole issue that it's just maddening. Um, it's, it's an issue that shouldn't be an issue, and it's become an issue because someone's made it an issue. Mm -hmm. And someone's made it an issue because he doesn't know what to do about the big issues that are facing, that are <laughs> facing our country. Bright, I, shiny you know, objects. Has not said a word about Puerto Rico. Mm -mm. Not a word. Those are Americans. Those are American citizens, just like the Texans and the Floridians. Nothing's being Which said about the Which he's frankly Americans. said very little about. Yeah, at least, well. but something, but something. Um, I, you know, I, I made an appearance at the I, very least. It's not the flag that those men fought for. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there is now a hashtag veterans who take the knee um, because there are a lot of veterans who have been supporting this. I saw one... Uh, it started um, because a man who is 97, and he's a World War II veteran, his son said that he said to him, this isn't what I fought for, and I absolutely support those men who are, who are taking a knee during the, you know, I didn't fight for the flag. I fought for their right to do that. And um, I, I... Some veterans don't feel that way. I know some veterans don't. Not she every veteran, no, nobody feels... Not everybody feels the same way about anything, but the point is, it's the right to protest, and it's a peaceful protestation. Um, that he's condemning these people. He didn't condemn the the American Nazis who and the the white supremacists who who, who marched in Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. The way he called these people sons of you know whatevers. Um, I you know I personally would like to give him a knee. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was actually trying to work that in there, yeah, but well. it didn't work. Out. <laughs> uh, but, oh my goodness! And and speaking of our government and what it's doing to our, our delightful country, um, Miss DeVos and her changes to to Title uh, Title Nine. Title Nine, yes. Let's Nicole let's go just back let out and a big sigh. <laughs> no, now her eye is twitching. Look. I choose to remain silent. In case you don't know, I'll let one of our educators... Uh... What's it? It's the, it's the uh, 
sexual abuse on campus. It's, yes. Uh, you know, it has made it harder now for a victim to bring her abuser to justice because it's been left more up to the college to do that. Yeah. That makes no sense. Well, they say no. there are too many people falsely accusing people. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't and there's not much of a record of that either. No. I disagree with um, I, and, and I don't understand why this is her issue du jour, quite frankly. You've got bigger issues to deal with. It's like, like this. It's like, like this Trump and the NFL. It's something yeah. that she can grab onto so she doesn't have to deal with the real issues. With the real issues, yeah. And, and that's part of the problem I have with it. So you're doing destruction in one area because you don't know how to make better the to things deflect. that you're supposed to actually do. Exactly. You know, well, so. Well, this is what happens when you hire a bunch of people who have no concept of the, the job they are given. I mean, you can only fake it so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Who had no idea what special education was. Yeah. What the, the Speaking of giving a knee to somebody, yeah. I, I personally, I would love, give I would love for that woman to come spend a week with me. Come spend a week with me. I have an open invitation to you. Come spend a week. Come plan my lessons. Come deal with my students. Come get to know them. Please, please come do this. You know and what? for anybody else who thinks that she's right, please come spend a week with me. Please come talk to me, an actual educator who spends every day with your kids trying to make them better people on this planet. Come do this. Come, oh, now I'm mad. I gotta stop. You know I gotta what? stop. <laughs> I hate you so much, lady. You come and spend but a week with me. But you know what? Me. A week isn't long enough. No, no, no. I've always said that. We have these, these people who tour schools and they kind of mill around for about a week. No, 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 no. Not a week. Spend a marking period with her. Spend a, mar a full period. It's a week. You could hang by your nose for a week. That's no big deal. Spend more than a week. But it's with probably her. more than she's ever spent in a oh, classroom. Oh, in a, oh, yeah, in a public yeah. school. Come spend twenty minutes in a more public than school. She's in a public school. Uh, <sighs> all right, we're going to move on because. <laughs> I need oh, to oh, the Let's see. Oh, my oh, breeze fire. Oh, you know we're going to go to roll that. Roll that next uh, intro. It's not necessarily current movie picks. Oh. All right, I'm on. <laughs> Glamorous, so. my God, you're gorgeous. Look at <laughs> you. Stop. Beautiful. <laughs> she is a vixen. I have so much makeup on right now. I can't Girl. wait to wash my face. Beyonce got nothing on you right now. Oh, she has something. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. Just a little. I have a movie pick. All Yay. right. So I went uh, to the movies about a week or so ago, and I saw It. Oh. oh. It was so good. Yeah? It was so good. It, you know, and they did deviate from the original movie. It was oh. more like the book than the, the original movie. Ooh. Well, the book is, the book is so, so good. Yeah. 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 And they also left it open for, there's going to be a sequel, because it was only like uh, part. So it wasn't no. the whole. first part of the book. Well, because the book's was, like a thousand pages. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. commitment. It is a commitment. So it's. They left it, mm. you know, the kids conquered the monster, they're, they're, and that was it. But oh. there's more. You know there's an <laughs> yeah, adult I know there's section. More. Oh, home viewer. Home hey. viewer. Oh, you want to take the home viewer now? All right. All right. Uh, Hi, home viewer. What you got? Hello, this is Meg. So I wanted to say hello to my mother, and you all look wonderful. Hi, um, I Hi, thank you, darling. Hello. I actually have a serious question. I wanted to take us back to the Japanese um, lantern fly, um, and I was wondering, since they've come from... China and Korea and sort of via that way. Is there any, has, have those countries done anything to mitigate the problem over there that we oh, could that's a good question. duplicate over here, done some benchmarking with them perhaps? That's a great question and um, I don't have the actual answer for that. I, I know, know that, that they are invasive in, in, I think they're invasive in Korea and parts of Japan, um, but where they're indigenous to, there are natural you know, uh, what, what's the word? Predators. Natural, predators. natural predators and then checks and okay. balances for them. The problem is that the, there's, there's none here. There's nothing to control their population. So we, okay. we have to be their predators. Okay. Well, that was my question. I'm enjoying the show thoroughly. I did not know the story about the hurricane and pop-up, which I was laughing for a good five minutes because 
<laughs> we all tried to give him a heart attack at some point. <laughs> and Jane, you have my favorite shoes on with the T-strap. So um, I will hang up, and great show, ladies. Thank you, my dear. Great question. <laughs> was see, a question. see you sometime next week, right? Yes, you're going out. Yay! Yay. Okay, back to it. So back to it. it. Yeah. Oh. I recommend it. It was really well done. The kids are great actors. Um, I'm so scared. And I'm, it scared. leaves you really wanting more. You're scared. Uh, such a I was so scared book. because I read the book. I was jumping book. all over my friend. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was all over him. <laughs> that book Poor gave guy, me straight up nightmares. Yeah. Like yeah. And the movie will too. It, it, yeah. So I, yep. I don't, I don't know. Now that now that I have a little one, like there are themes <laughs> in there that, that bother me to very core levels. Yeah, of there's my, a little bit of, of that being, in there. So. <laughs> But I'm wait, I'm excited. I can't wait for the sequel. I yeah. want to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I know what happens next. I saw the book. I read the book. I saw the first movie. But I want to see how they do this wow. with these new people. How's, how's Bill Skarsgård uh, uh, compared excellent. to Tim Curry? He's really creepy. Oh, okay. He's really, really good. Oh, it's creepy in the I commercial. mean, Tim Curry is Tim Curry. Like he's I untouchable, have, yeah, but yeah. you can't touch. But this that. guy is is phenomenal. He's really, really good. Wow. The pictures excellent. are. He's so good. Frightening. And yes. then when you see him without makeup, it's like, oh, you cute little thing. You are not terrifying at all. Like, he's, he's so cute. He's, he's so like, handsome. The Netflix thing that he's in, Hemlock Grove. That yeah. I, that I like. Do you see how cute he's he like is? Two, so yes, he he's is. He's so cute. He's what like 23. In, in a, he's young. They're all young. What, what I think what I've liked the most about the movie coming out is the, the memes that have arrived from it. Like, you know, there's a picture of there's him down, down here. He's like, like, I can take away your student loans. And there's a girl going, well. And she's and you see her feet sticking out of the sewer. Yeah. <laughs> Those things are phenomenal. I mean, they're hilarious. <laughs> I like the one that there's pizza down here. And you see a little feet coming out of the sewer. I would go down there for pizza. I don't know about you. I'm hungry. I am too. Pizza. Can we get some Chinese? Pizza sounds great. Pizza order sounds a pizza? great. Indeed. Order us a pizza, Jamie. Now I guess it's not. <laughs> we only have 10 minutes left. I'll never get here. Uh, fine. We should have followed this earlier. We Next should have month. a pizza party. We should. Next month and we, we should, can have yeah, a pizza well, party. I, I keep wanting a pajama party I and that's know, not we've happening. I've been talking about a pajama party for years now. I'm waiting it's for gonna it. Happen. But you know, there's supposed to be a really good oh, pizza. Oh yes, play the outro. Out. <laughs> play the outro. <laughs> it should be a really good pizza. It's Sheila. Sheila. It's not necessarily current movie pics. Gracious, we're eating cheese, we're drinking wine, which I am empty, because I'm a lush, and I was... Oh. I was <laughs> Martha I, will fill you up. I was just, I up. was nervous as a cat before this show. Um, I don't know why, and the alcohol is helping Because immensely. I was missing? It was, I think that it threw okay. off the I'm energy. Sorry. It was just no. disturbing. Um, I was nervous, so, too. I had a thousand pins in my head. I'm like, I'll never so get out of here. let's see. Let's do something that's not... Uh, <laughs> there you are. Let's, <laughs> Let's hear it for the Australian girls who are now allowed to wear pants in school. <laughs> I couldn't believe yeah. that. I thought I, Australia I had no was idea such they a progressive couldn't. I didn't know that either. They just passed a law that they were, up until now in public school, girls have had to wear dresses or skirts. They could that not wear pants. That so odd for it's Australia. I was even Australia. allowed to wear pants you know, in Catholic school. Works. Yeah. That's weird though, because yeah. I just prefer dresses over pants. So I'm just, I'm really? not touched by it at all. I'm like, oh, I like dresses. I it's had an incident a few times with skirts, so I got, I'm yeah, a pants kind yeah. of girl now. I, yeah. I've been in a hurry. I've tucked and left the room. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, Showed everybody no my, shame, so. my I did that in front of a class one time. A girl came up and told me, no, your dresses are your hiding your hiding panties. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so give me my pants. <laughs> See, yeah. that's when you turn around and go, I know. You're welcome. Right. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I just I well, wanted you to see that. that. Paying attention, right? <laughs> it's all about re-owning the situation. I want to see how long it would take you to tell me. Right. <laughs> That's how you know who your statement. true friends are. <laughs> And what a statement, right? Yes. Everyone's doing this in Milan. I don't know where you are. A &T. Don't you read the fashion news? Right. It's the rage. Goodness. I have my Monday panties on, and it's Monday. What else? <laughs> <laughs> It's all in how you react to right, exactly. <laughs> Be shameless. Don't you like stripes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank so. goodness we've gotten into the lighter. Yay, there it is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Only five, five minutes. minutes. Five minutes. Sheila, you should have gotten here earlier. Oh, I was going to say, it I went tried. faster because we were waiting for well, Sheila. I tried. Indeed. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness gracious. Let's see. Um, 
Well, we're not going to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, uh, let's deal with this little irony of Melania Trump d discussing bullies <laughs> with the UN. <laughs> Can I just say wah wah and move on? <laughs> Is there That's, anything more we can I, say about I, I, this? Yeah. No, no, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a Nicole moment with, with Melania. Did you see the picture of her in the garden that Michelle Obama planted? I did She's not. She's wearing rubber gloves to pick to pick um, <laughs> vegetables. What do you wear? Because she was some, washing dishes right after that. She had her jeans and her flannel shirt on. They were Did she have a sunglasses? Oh, so she had her garden wear on. Right, her garden, <laughs> garden wear on. And she's had um, rubber gloves on while she was picking, I don't know, chard um, with some kids. She didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ew. Yes, that just, would be me just, with my rubber gloves <laughs> and my flannel and jeans. And pick that. It's something. Right. We'll take a picture of you. Photo op. I thought Photo of you. I saw it. Nicole would be so proud of Melania. I'd be so proud of her. <laughs> <laughs> See the pride all over my face right now. Uh, she, there was some, on the news the other night, there was something of her walking to make a speech and she was wearing this gray suit with like these long culottes that were cut off at the, the calf or something. Mm. And my husband, who gives not to anything about fashion, he looked at that and went, what is she wearing? Isn't she supposed to be a model? <laughs> I was like, oh, I love you, babe. <laughs> he just won you over again. He's just like, yeah, uh -huh. there it is. <laughs> but the bullying, the bullying speech was so ironic since her husband had just bullied the UN the day before. Uh, well, you know what's it, funny? He does it on a daily basis, my right. God. They showed a video of him on Facebook talking right. about something, and then he said, and Melania really wanted to be here. She was standing right next to him. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I was like, wait, I'm, what? <laughs> I love that. And who's that? <laughs> I seriously think the man is... Uh, like, he did not realize his own wife was He's right next to him. Yeah, she really wanted to be here. Okay. We have three minutes. I want to make sure this, is, this gets on. Uh, next Saturday, uh, September 30th at noon. I don't know when I'm doing it. I don't know if I'm still doing it because I haven't heard from Daniel. But uh, there's story time on the steps of the Reading Public Library. Oh, oh, wow. There's a bunch of people, I think I'm one of them, who's going to be there reading a children's book. Oh. Wonderful. On the steps of the library. That's so cool. Um, st the event starts at noon. Um, there is also the Silent Book Club, which I'm sorry, I know there was one last Thursday. Uh, it's sponsored by the Reading Public Library. Uh, so go to their website, uh, ask questions. Kimberly Savello, I believe, is the, uh, she works with the library, is one of the uh, sponsors of this event. But you get together, you have a little nosh. You sit quietly and read for a while, and then you talk about what you've read. And I think that's a lot of fun. It, I tried to look up uh, upcoming events, but they only had the one listed that was last week. But I think it's an ongoing thing, because who reads a book in one sitting? They're wonderful things at the library. They yes, really the library is things. an amazing place, and yep. you should definitely go there. So story time on the steps and silent book club, club at the library. Also, BCTV is having, Woo! upcoming now, before our next show, so October 16th through the 20th is their one main fundraising event of the year. It's the Oktoberfest auction. There's wonderful things to bid for, including something from us. Uh -oh. uh, and we're going to be on it. And they right, are going to be right. on it. Um, the I'm 17th. not going to be. But the 17th, June's they June's will 17th. be hosting. Right. Who's all, you all three we of are. you are going and to Jamie. do Jamie. And Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, are going to do uh, be here hosting and offering items right. for bid. And it's, it, don't miss it. It really is uh, BCTV's major fundraising effort for the year. And uh, they do so much good for the community. They let us do this. Uh, but I have a shout out. Yes. Um, October thirteenth um, at Genesius Theater, Young Frankenstein. Excellent. Ooh, That's there's two be weekends. Fun. Right. Mm -hmm. I have one too. Yes. Uh, uh, Reading Theater Project for the next two weekends is doing original plays. The theme is fear, and it's at the the women's uh, the women's club of Reading Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the next two weekends. It should be wonderful. George Hatz is directing. Um, and um, there are some really wonderful plays all about people's fears. That's great. Anything? Uh, no. 
Good. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> All right. But Betsy we, DeVos, if you're out there. We do Hi. thank Come see us. TV <laughs> and tonight's crew, Joan, Caitlin, Tyler, and I don't see Matt, so, but thank you, Matt, for being here early and helping us set up. Sure so, all right, till next month, which is, oh, geez, October, October 23rd at 9 o'clock, the same bat chime, the same bat channel. This is That's What She Said. I'll see you from the road. Bye. Bye. Bye.